for the first time in forever. I think <laughs> I messed up my intro. That is how today is going. Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 75 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, I don't even know the date, August 11th, 2020, and it's gonna be a great podcast episode. I have a collaboration today. I am wearing knitting just for you guys. And yeah, I have some projects to talk about and some questions to answer, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So the weather is hot, hot, hot here in North Texas. I think it's hit 100 the past two days and will be 100 for the next couple of days. It's, it's really hot. We actually had our air conditioning go out on Sunday evening, and it was miserable. I love air conditioning. I've said that before, and I stand buy it. But I did go put some knitting on for you guys because I, I'm i back to work as I've mentioned before and I was just like kind of slumping and I needed something to pick me up so I changed. I took my hair down. I was in a messy bun and spruced up a little bit so that I could be ready to podcast and it totally worked. I am wearing the over the top top it is a pearl soho pattern. It's completely free. It's really cute, super simple. It has these little um, folded hem edge on the neck and the sleeves and the bottom. It's really, really short. It doesn't have to be. I think I just accidentally made it that way. Or maybe classic Natalie, I didn't buy enough yarn, which seems to happen a lot. I believe this is a, I definitely have this project page in my Ravelry, so I'll make sure to link it. Um, but I believe it's like a, wool, cotton, maybe linen blend, um, but it's a, it's a cool uh, yarn. I really liked working with it and it worked up well, but it is really short on me. Again, I think it was just my mistake when I was making it, so it might not be something I hang on to for long because it's just not practical for me to wear something cropped, although I could maybe wear it with dresses, so I might rethink that. I feel like it would be kind of cute in the fall to have on one of my like little jersey A-line dresses you know, tank top dresses with this and like leggings and boots, that might be really cute. Okay, what are we doing? Okay, where were we? <laughs> this is how today's going. When I start working, my brain goes crazy. So today is a collaboration. I really hope you guys have been enjoying these collaborations and getting to learn about new makers and new podcasters is a whole lot of fun. Um, so today's collaboration is with Bella of Bella's Custom Crochets and she is from Connecticut. She is a toddler mom and a crochet designer. She loves to design shawls and she is getting into garment design, which I have so much respect for. And her podcast is going to be a year old in November and the big push today for her is she is super super close to 1,000 subscribers which is a really exciting milestone so head over to Bella's channel Bella's custom crochets and show her some love subscribe to her I know you're going to really enjoy her personality she's super sweet she's also a knitter so she's a knitter and a crocheter and does both beautifully um so don't be confused just like me nitty natty i still crochet bella's custom crochet she still knits <laughs> so um yes go head over there i would really really feel like i would be so excited if we could get her to a thousand subscribers it's just a really big milestone on youtube so really hope we can do that for her and yeah go check her out you're really going to like it. And Bella and I will both be answering your questions from Instagram later on here in my episode. And then I'll have her links all down below. So her channel, her Instagram, her websites, um, and also her podcast, which will come out on Friday. So the day after this. So go over to her channel and go ahead and subscribe so you can see that, or you can come back to here and I will add the link when her podcast has dropped. Okay, well said so far. <laughs> Not. So anyway, let's get on to knitting and crochet. I have not finished anything this week. I got really, really close though on um, some socks. So I think I will start with that. So a nearly finished object, although not, not so nearly. I wanted to finish up this pair of socks before sock week started on Sunday. And the weekend just kind of got away from me. We 
went to a friend's house and swam in the pool and I don't know pools and being outside and knitting they just don't really mix but I did do a lot of knitting so this is where I was last week on these socks and I made tons and tons of progress so here is the first sock so I'm getting really close I have another big yellow stripe and then I did the ribbing in that orangey um, what's the right name for that color I don't know I love that color um, that will be the end so I am getting getting really really close although this week I've set aside to work on my sock week socks so I really haven't done anything else on these but let me go ahead and move my marker just in case I get inspired to just finish a sock or two over the weekend the thing is that now I am working and having to go into our school building we're not doing training anymore and so my knitting time is drastically reduced which I know I can't complain like oh you don't get to knit during work hours anymore Natalie oh I feel so bad for you but really I was getting a lot of knitting done because of those training hours so bummer that <laughs> I don't have as many meetings this week and I can't knit as much but that's okay and this yarn I don't know if I still have the label for it I do do I or is this the right one uh nope that is definitely socks that I finished a while ago but here is this one so this is mustache yarn and the colorway is jelly belly and these socks are really really fun so just continuing to work those up I did start these way back in May so it's really time for them to be finished so we'll see if I can make that happen by next week Okay, I've done a little bit on my incendiary tank, which is by Stephanie Aaron. It's a crocheted tank top. This is all of my um, made and discarded pieces, which there have been more since last week. I'm really trying to get this to be just super custom fit for myself. And again, that just takes some brain power. So I haven't really ha had a lot of time to sit aside and do it. But I did end up making two matching pieces. Woohoo! I had trouble with that and connected them. And I am experimenting with how I can make the armhole not so deep. Um, and so that's why you see like these little bits out to the side. But I think I figured out a way I can do that even better. So now I'm at the point where I need to replicate this for the back and then I can join in the round, which is really exciting. So I might do that tonight maybe while I am, because Tuesdays I have a standing Zoom knit night with friends, so I might do that. That's when I usually get a lot of knitting and crochet done, so we shall see. But I think I just had one piece last week that was good, but honestly, I ended up taking that one out too, so this is all since last week, but I don't want to brush it up against my microphone, but I think that it's gonna fit for, ugh. whoa, what is happening? Clearly, I need some water. Uh, does anyone else have any tells when you're doing too many things? When I, I know that I am, not that I feel like really super stressed right now, I just have a lot going on. When I get stressed, I get an eye twitch in this eye. <laughs> and I also start dropping things like all the time. Like when I'm trying to do too many things at once, I will drop like four things in a day. I think, um, what was that, a couple weeks ago, I like, broke our crock pot, I like broke a plate, I, I don't even know. That's a tangent, but anyway, I um, don't remember what I was saying. I think this is gonna fit pretty well. I won't be able to tell until I do finish the front and back pieces, connect them and you know do a couple inches and then I can try it on. But I'm going to be very honest with myself if it's not fitting um, and adjust it, I think or at least take it out and say I'm gonna make something else. I love this pattern though, so don't get me wrong on that. I love the look of this pattern. It's just sometimes I can't figure out a way to make it work for me. But I am hopeful and maybe I will have more to show you if I can get some time to work on this over the weekend. Lastly, I have been working on my Sock Week socks. I started them on Sunday. Um, sock Week is a knit or crochet sock make along. And if you are super speedy, you can still join in on Thursday, but it does end on Sunday, August 16th. Um, so not to worry though, we'll have more stuff coming up. But I started on Sunday and I am using this Malia Made It Shark in the Water yarn, which was one of the exclusive Sock Week colorways. 
I have already made an entire pair from this yarn and I still have 50 grams left. So I'm making shorty socks for my sister. So I decided not to do contrast um, colors. I just started in with the stripes. That's why I've got a really short like cuff. And then it's hard to tell, but I actually have waist yarn right here where I'm going to put in the heel. I'm gonna do an afterthought heel with the same yarn. At least that's my plan right now, but I will make both socks before I do that, I think. Um, see what colors I have left or what colors I wanna insert right there um, to make one of those kind of like bullseye looking sock or heels. So I think that's gonna be really cool. So hopefully my sister will like these. I will save them and give them to her for Christmas. This marker is just measuring my progress for today, which surprisingly I've done a decent amount for not really having much of a, any kind of a break. I was only able to knit on it a little bit this morning and then a little bit for lunchtime. So yeah, that is my sock week sock. And then I did not want to be without working on our other sponsor's yarn, which is Molly Klein Design. I haven't started it yet, but I am planning to, I think, do a crocheted cozy. I need to find my hook. I don't know where I put it. I think it's in the project bag with my other crochet yarn cozies. So maybe I need to start that tonight too so I can have that going. I'm about to have a lot of whips, you guys. A lot of small whips. So I just need to buckle down and like take the weekend off and work on them. It sounds really, really nice right now. So maybe I can do that. But yep, I have both of those. One project going and a future one and I have one more thing. You guys are gonna be super surprised. Are you ready? If you watched last night's live, which I'm going to do a live on Wednesday, you've already seen this. Actually, you've already seen it in more form, but guess what I am attempting? I am attempting a crocheted sock. So this is not my first time trying to crochet a sock. Many, many years ago, I started a cuff down crocheted sock I did not know enough about crochet. I was trying to do, I think, front and back post stitches, and I was having a really hard time. Um, but I'm a little better at crochet now, so I'm hoping I can make this work. I am using the pattern from Ron Strong and Marley Birds. Um, they just did a sock make along. I think it was called my first crocheted sock or my first toe up crocheted sock. So it is pretty strange, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm definitely used to knitting socks. I feel like knitting really lends itself to sock material and i'm not so sure how i feel about crochet yet but i'm gonna give it a chance i don't think i have a small enough hook this is my smallest hook and i think my gauge is too loose i'm a really loose cro crocheter i usually have to go down a few needle sizes i'm also very intrigued by the fact that it starts with like a toe box it almost reminds me of like point shoes um, and I'm already thinking of like how I would do it, try it differently, but then I'm like, Natalie, you've never done this before. It's probably like that for a reason. So I am giving the concept of crochet socks the benefit of the doubt. I've seen r some really pretty crocheted socks so far in Sock Week, which is opening up my mind to the concept. So I'm just gonna keep trying it, and I know that these are not going to be perfect in any way, and that is totally fine. Um, as long as they can go on my feet, I can use them, if, even if they're too loose or whatever. So I just got started late last night, or late for me, I got started at like nine. <laughs> And I only could do this for about 30 minutes. So I have, I was got really lucky. And as I was able to get more of Malia's yarn, it looks a little different. Um, it's, it's not that different. It's still self-striping, but it's actually the same as this. It's just in a hank. I need to wind it. And I have a different base. I'm excited to use this base because I haven't tried it before. It is 70% um, superwash merino, 25% nylon, and 5% Stellina. I don't know if the sparkles are showing up. I'll be able to see when it goes back on when I watch this back and edit it. But I love that it is sparkly. I think that's so fun. So I'm going to give it a try. I didn't think I was going to be able to try crocheted socks during sock week because I didn't have enough yarn. But luckily, Malia reached out and said she still had some more and she could get it to me really fast. So thank you, Malia. I really appreciate it. And I am going to do my best to make you guys proud of me. I'm going to at least try. So for me, 
this is a huge challenge, crocheting a sock. I'm gonna see if I can do it in a week and I'm gonna you know, keep knitting on that one. And you know what? If I don't make it to the end of the challenge, it's really not a big deal because I already did my, my personal challenge earlier when I did my sock week survival guide. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll make sure that one's linked. Um, but also, you know what? It's just knitting and it's just crochet. So as long as I'm trying something new, like I'm happy. So crocheted toe up sock, Hopefully, maybe I've gotten further and you can see that in the live video from Wednesday because today's Tuesday, live video is Wednesday and it will be out, but who knows? Who knows? All right, let's get into some questions. So these are questions that have come from you on Instagram. And so if you want to be one of the people that gets to ask questions when I have collaborations, make sure you're following me on Instagram at Nitty Natty. And any week that I have a collaboration here on YouTube, I will ask there for your questions. And sometimes I'll let you know who I'm collaborating with. And sometimes it's a surprise, but definitely go check out Bella's channel after this and go check out her questions tomorrow on Friday when she posts her video. I'm really curious as to how she's going to answer these. So we've got Five questions from you here on Instagram. Let's start with the first one. Which do you prefer, knitting over crochet or crochet over knitting? So my answer is going to be knitting over crochet. And it's hard to say that because I don't ever wanna stop crocheting, but if I had to pick one, it would have to be knitting. That's, that's what I started with. That's the only one I can do without looking, <laughs> although I'm trying to get better at crochet. That's the one that I know really well and I, you know, I knit socks all the time, although I'm trying my crochet socks, and I knit garments, and I don't know, knitting is my first love, but when I don't crochet, I feel like something is missing. So I, for me, I definitely need both, but if I only had to do one, if they're like, you can never do the other one ever again, I would have to go with knitting. So I feel like Bella would probably say crochet, so I'm interested to see, <laughs> I'm interested to see what her answer is. Number two, what is a new stitch you would like to learn and how do you like to learn new stitches? So for me, I actually really wanna learn how to do tapestry crochet, not tapestry, wrong answer, Tunisian, <laughs> Tunisian crochet. I love the look of Tunisian crochet. I've seen so many gorgeous shawls, garments out of Tunisian crochet. And what's really holding me back, besides just the mental capacity to learn something new right now, is I don't see a Tunisian hook that I think I would like. I don't think it exists. I don't like wooden crochet hooks and I don't like inline crochet hooks is what I've been told. I like the, the curved, more curved ones. And so I haven't seen a combination of what's the opposite of inline. I don't know. I haven't seen those that are metal and also Tunisian. So that's kind of holding me back. And I know that sounds a little bit almost even like snobby, but I know that I won't, I won't enjoy it if I don't have like the proper tools that I like. The crochet hooks that I use all the time, my absolute favorite are these um, Clover Amours. And I don't even know, I think this is like a, a metal. I mean, it's like a little different than like just an aluminum. Um, and then I like that kind of crochet hook head. So if you ever see something that looks like this, and is metal and Tunisian, please let me know because I will be snatching that right up so that I can have my own set. The closest thing that I think I would like, even though they're wooden, is the Knit Pick set. But then again, I think they might be inline. So I probably, I like with an inline hook, I just can't even pull my stitches through. I don't know what it is. I don't know why I have so much trouble with it. And same with like wooden. It's like I can't quite get my stitches to work for me. Who knows? Um, but I need to give it a try because I love the outcome of Tunisian stitches and I've seen so many gorgeous designs. So that's what I want to learn. And then the way that I learn usually nowadays is on YouTube. I will go watch videos from sometimes my favorite people, sometimes new people, sometimes if I'm following a pattern, I will just watch their tutorials. But that's usually how I learn new things nowadays. I'm definitely a learner that needs to do it, needs to do it several times. And 
needs to like take my time learning new things because it's hard for me to learn new things. I like to be good at it and it doesn't always work out that way, especially when it's new. So that's how I prefer to learn new things. All right, number three, what is something you refuse to make? Um, I don't really know if there's anything I flat out refuse to make. I think there was a similar question not too long ago and my answer to it was anything like inappropriate. Like I don't want to make anything that is inappropriate or to me like too um, revealing. I definitely like things a little more modest. So I wouldn't say like refuse ever, ever, ever to make these items, but I probably wouldn't ever make like a bathing suit <laughs> or like those little, um, oh, I don't know. What is it? Not like the bralette things. Well, maybe, I don't know. I probably won't ever make one of those because that's just not me. And I know you can wear them like with layers and everything, um, but that's not really my style. I also don't think I've ever actually made a crop top before. And that's been really popular the past two years. So I'm not saying I would ever refuse because my mind, my style changes all the time. Um, but those are some of the things that I've like resisted and have not made. Okay, number four, I am really excited to see Bella's answer on this because I feel like she is definitely more of an expert in this area. But the question is, what are your tips for getting drapey projects with crochet? Um, and I believe the person who asked this question said, my stuff always comes out so stiff. So there are two like pretty simple fixes you can apply to almost any project to get a drapier look. One is to increase your hook size. So drape, let's talk about drape. Drape basically just means like a finished pieces fabric, like ability to kind of have that more of a flow, more of a, I don't know what the other word for it is, drape. <laughs> That's the word, not be stiff. Um, and you can achieve that by having more space between your stitches, giving your stitches more room to move and the fabric being more flowy. So if you combine, um, I don't know enough about crochet to just like throw out hook sizes and, and yarn weights here, but if you use a larger hook size with a smaller yarn, you're going to have more drape. Now that isn't always the case. And the other factor is fiber content. So there are some fibers that are just not drapey. Um, if you want something that'd be a little more drapey, you're probably going to have to lean towards more natural fibers like wool, like, even some cotton blends, um, acrylic is not going to be your drapiest material. So if you have acrylic yarn and a smaller hook and a larger yarn, you're, that's going to give you something really stiff and sometimes that's what you want or really tight. You know, If you have a wool yarn with a larger hook and a smaller yarn, you're going to get something very, very drapey. So I kind of like learned that about crochet when I made the flat iron shawl by TL Yarn Crafts, Tony Lipsy. Um, it's a fingering weight pattern, really simple, great for using up stash yarn because you can use three different colors and it's fingering weight yarn. And I think like an H hook, which is pretty large. And I fell in love with crochet at that point because I saw how how drapey crochet really can be and I was just blown away. Um, so that's really the two factors that I know of is hook and needle, um, no I'm sorry, hook and yarn size, like the combination of those. So go up a hook size and also fiber content. Some fibers are just not going to be as drapey as others, lean towards more natural fibers and you are probably going to have more drape. Last one, number five, are you a process knitter slash crocheter or do you enjoy the finished object more? Um, I would say I'm somewhere in between. I, I like the process, but I also like to finish. So I'm not going to sit around with lingering whips forever and ever. I kind of like to be very productive in my knitting and crochet and get things finished but I am not like so attached to a finished piece to not take it out and do it again, um, which has happened many times this year. Um, so yeah, I, I fall somewhere in between. I would say I'm a different, 
I'm a different P. I'm not a process or a product knitter. I'm a productive knitter. I like to make, I like to be productive with it. I like to make progress on it a lot um, and achieve, get closer and closer to that finished item. So yeah, falling somewhere in between. So make sure you go check out Bella's um, channel and her episode and see what all of her answers were, especially that drapey crocheted projects question. I bet she has some really good tips for us. Okay, I also saw a couple, actually I think three questions here on Ravelry that I'm gonna answer real quick. How do you prevent ladders when knitting socks in Magic Loop, in the Magic Loop method? And this is from Nameless Gal Friend. So ladders are those little spaces on the side when you're doing magic loop. Sometimes you get them with double pointed needles as well, though I haven't heard of that as often. So the trick here is knowing, for me at least, is knowing which stitch to tighten. So the problem is, is there's obviously a gap right here. And if that stretches out too much and you don't correct it, you're gonna get ladders. And honestly, like you can definitely tell, like, let me flatten this. You can tell where I um, change needles. Like I think it's pretty obvious there's a line, but there's not a huge gap. And with wear and with blocking, this that goes away. So let me show you how to prevent ladders. I've just started my, uh, like flipped around and I'm going to knit the first stitch and you can tighten the first stitch all you want, but it's not gonna do a thing. When you go into your second stitch, that is where you need to pull and do your second stitch and that will tighten up your gap. The reason is that if you pull on your first stitch and then you go to knit your second stitch, that little ladder is just going to loosen back up. But if you do it after you've already knit one stitch, that should help. It doesn't work for everybody, but that's what I do and that's what works for me. You don't need to yank on it super tight, just keep it even and consistent and let me know, try it out, <laughs> let me know if that helps or if you have any other tips for how to prevent ladders, let us know in the comments or over here on the Ravelry thread and help out a friend. Okay, second question, this is a cute username, is Stinkzilla. She says, hi Natalie, I thought I remembered seeing in one of your podcast recommendations for the number of rows to knit for the foot part of a sock by shoe size. Am I imagining that? I thought you had typed those recommendation numbers on the screen at one point. Anyway, I thought I'd ask now that I'm knitting a sock for sock week, thanks. Okay, so I don't know if I had, I don't ever, I know I haven't ever posted a chart that correlates number of rows versus shoe size. So there might be a chart like that that exists out there, but just be wary because not everyone's row gauge, row gauge is the same. So any kind of like estimation, like knit X number of rows for a, a shoe size women's nine is just going to be an estimate um so i might have put some suggestions out there but this is what i know for me to be true <laughs> when i use a us one needle 2.25 millimeters and i use sock yarn that is 75 percent nylon and 25 no 75 percent wool 25 percent nylon for me i wear a us women's eight i need 65 rounds for my foot and that's with a fish lips kiss heel there's so many factors that go into it the yarn type your gauge um, your heel that you're putting in that it's going to be really hard to know exactly the number of rows until you've just knit enough socks to know so for me i always do 65 rounds unless i change my sock base if i change it to like an 80 20 then i actually need fewer stitches and fewer rounds um, and a larger needle interestingly enough um, for my sister who is who wears a 10 and a half I think I do like 74 rounds for her so 65 for me 74 for her it's a really small um, difference it, it's not you don't need that many more rows like her foot size so maybe knowing that that can help you get like an estimate if you're around eight nine or ten um, but I don't think I ever shared like a chart or a resource like that. But if you know of one, let us know because that sounds super, super helpful. And I think there are some out there for like the number of inches that you need for your foot depending on your shoe size. 
Last question from McTurtle77. Hi, Natalie. I've been knitting for a few years now and I am constantly knitting socks. Yay. <laughs> but I want to branch out into garments. What advice do you have for a new garment knitter? What should I look for in a pattern? And do you happen to know of any great beginner sweater or shirt patterns? Thanks so much, Shannon. Okay, Shannon, I'm really excited that you are branching into garments. Having knit socks, you know, you're ready. Garments have a few new techniques, but honestly, you're ready for this. So I would look, in my opinion, I would look for like a seamless top-down sweater to start with. Um, something that is not in pieces because that takes a lot of like, I don't know, um, you know, seaming and making the different pieces. It's a lot. Um, I also would look for a pattern that's been released more recently and isn't super traditional because typically older patterns or more traditional looking patterns are not only knit in pieces, but also have horrible instructions and they're not really horrible instructions, but they're instructions like, like this. Knit blah, blah, blah every six rows also increasing every eight rows and at the same time when the armhole comes up do that no that is way too much for a first time garment knitter it's how patterns have traditionally been written like my first sweater pattern was like that and it is a whole lot and some sweater patterns are still like that that they have to be especially when they have like cables with different numbers of repeats so don't start with that i would start with something really really simple looking as far as stitch pattern, something more modern, something that tons of people have made. Um, and you can kind of do that by searching for like popular patterns on Ravelry. So some that I have heard of are, are great for first sweaters. Um, tin Can Knits tends to, they tend to design towards um, really simplistic, like easy for beginners. Um, and that sweater is like the flax or flax light. I've heard really good things about. Um, another one that I think you would be o definitely okay with as long as you can pick up stitches um, is Hohe's, some of Hohe's patterns. They tend to be, well, not like the most simple because they're not all like the top down raglan construction. They're not super difficult. I made the, um, like a cloud and you do have to pick up stitches and you have to trust the pattern, but the actual like knitting and stuff is not hard. So that could be a good one. Those are two designers that I know of. Um, probably some of Andrea Mowry's patterns as well um, are going to be pretty simple. But like, like I said, something that looks stitch, stitch wise simple is knit from the top down because then you can try it on. Um, and then also is like, published recently and lots of people have made it. That tends to be like a pretty good indicator of a great pattern. And I'm not saying you should always like use that to choose your patterns. Cause of course, as a small, like a very small pattern designer, I really appreciate it when people find my patterns and trust me enough to try them um, instead of going for a more well-known designer. But when you are starting out like a whole new genre of knitting, I feel like that is a tried and true way to go. If you have any other great suggestions for patterns for Shannon, let her know here in the comments or over on Ravelry. All right, let's dive right into news. So I have a new live video for Sock Week. I was honestly really inspired by Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast, who did a whole summer sock camp this year, and she did um, weekly Instagram lives, and I thought, that is such a good idea because we're in this unique place i feel like with all of the technology that we can gather together without actually gathering together and that is so much fun so i had an instagram live on sunday that is saved to my igtv if you want to go watch that um, after the fact and i am going to although it will be in the past by the time this podcast comes up um, have had a YouTube live on Wednesday and they were both for sock week, but we don't always talk just about socks. We kind of always get into other stuff. On Sunday, we talked about books and all kinds of stuff. So the live videos are always a lot of fun. I am trying to be consistently doing one Instagram live and one YouTube live every single month. So the best place to find out about that is on Instagram, although I'm trying to be better about 
posting it to the like YouTube community tab. So if you are not an Instagram user and you mostly are just on YouTube, um, I think if you have on like notifications, then you will get an alert that like either I've gone live or that I've posted to the community tab. So that might be a good way to keep up if you're not on Instagram. And then the biggest thing going on this week is Sock Week. So we started on Sunday, August 9th, and it ends on August 16th. If you haven't heard of it yet, if you're like a really quick sock knitter, you, you can still <laughs> join in. Um, honestly, that's not even true. If you are not a quick sock knitter, you can still start a sock today, post about it on Instagram and enter to win prizes. You can still participate. So don't let that hold you back that we started on Sunday. It does end this Sunday, August 16th at midnight, your local time or central time, whatever you wanna do. Um, and you do, if you finish a sock, you need to post it on the Ravelry thread in order to enter, uh, enter for prizes by 10 a.m. central time, Monday, August 17th. If you're on Instagram, um, I am probably gonna go ahead and choose that winner at the same time, like 10 a.m. on Monday, I think. We'll see. Um, just get your post up by, by Sunday night if you can, and you can post as many times as you want on Instagram. If you haven't heard me say that already, I tried to say it a lot on Instagram, but if you are posting using the hashtag SockWeek2020, you can do that when your project is just yarn, a whip, all the way through, and I will be picking a winner from there. Let's just go into some life stuff. I actually have a meeting in 11 minutes. <laughs> I feel like I did, I tried to not seem like I am rushing. I really didn't feel like I was rushing today, um, but that's the reality is that sometimes I am getting these podcasts in when I can because I realized if I didn't do it today, I wouldn't be able to do it tomorrow and then I wouldn't be able to edit it for Thursday and that's just the reality of life when we have multiple things going on. So really that's what's going on in my life. I am tired from working. Um, every year as a school teacher when I go back to work, I'm like, oh man, working full time is hard. How do you guys do it all year long? <laughs> There's always that like two week period of like getting used to just doing something else all day, being out of the house all day. So I have been like, have even though we're virtual, virtual learning right now, I have had to go into the school building quite a bit. Um, we are getting like all the materials ready for parents to pick up and tonight and the next couple of nights I'm gonna be working late till like six, but luckily that means I get to have time like this during the day or I don't have to work. Um, so yeah, it's almost five o'clock, which it means it's almost time for me to get onto Zoom and do a meeting. Um, but yeah, that's really what's been going on in my life. And then bringing me joy this week, I am looking forward to the weekend. I am planning to record a fun video over the weekend, a knitting video, and also kind of wrap up some projects and hopefully start some, or at least get prepared to start some new projects. I am already thinking about fall, honestly. I am like not really ready for fall, but I'm thinking about knitting projects for fall and I'm ready to like plan out like everything that I'm gonna do. I already have, honestly, through the end of the year, I'm like, okay, this month I'm gonna be focusing on this and then like I need to make sure I reserve like all of October for the West Knits shawl knit along because I always get so behind on that. Anyway, I'm gonna have all that as part of another video so you can plan your fall projects with me. Um, and I think that will be coming out next week. I believe that's what I'm planning to do. So, yep, that's gonna be really fun. I'm looking forward to carving out some time on Saturday for that specifically. Anyway, I think that is everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Bella's channel. It will be linked down below, Bella's Custom Crochets. And thank you guys so much for watching, even in all of the craziness. I hope you have a great one. Bye.